Um, yeah, so uh, welcome to uh, my lecture four in one, how to combine gamification, blended and uh, mobile and micro learning. Um, we will, the lecture will take about an hour. Um, I will first present you the pedagogical and didactical background of uh, all these concepts and of um, how we combine them to um, create a learning platform. And there will be then also a live demo and also an invitation for you to join uh, to experience firsthand um, how this works. And um, then at the end, um, there will be enough room for questions and answers. But if you um, have um, answers or if you have questions in the meantime, just feel free to ask them right away. If there's something you don't understand, just um, unmute yourself and, and ask the question, please. OK, so um, just um, to my person, um, I um, founded eSquirrel six years ago. Before that, I um, did a PhD in computer science, specialized in cloud computing. Um, even before that, I did a Master's of Science in Computational Intelligence and Applied Mathematics at the universities of um, Vienna, the Applied um, Uni University of Technology in Vienna, and also at the uh, um, New York City University and uh, at um, the um, Slovak University. Um, I'm university lecturer at FH Hagenberg and also um, textbook author myself. And um, yeah, the, the mission of eScroll is that we want to change teaching and learning with our gamified and mobile blended learning platform. And to do that, we want to enhance every book, every subject and every course with a more efficient, more attractive and more entertaining learning and teaching experience. Um, when I started this six years ago, I um, was teaching myself um, in a language course and I was thinking on how could I motivate my students to learn to repeat in small um, time units that didn't have a lot of time during the day. Um, but I also wanted to have something that is really um, that works with the textbook we used. And this is so in, in short uh, um, how, how eSquirrel got started. But um, I will now go into the concept of how this works and, and what are the pedagogical um, backgrounds behind this. So um, the first one is, is micro learning. Um, micro learning dissects learning content into small learning nuggets, like you see the maki on, on the video or on, on the picture. Um, you have a lot of small exercises um, and you can um, just really this, this, this idea, if you just have um, five or ten minutes, you can complete um, a learning unit and achieve something, be motivated by that, and then go on. Um, as we will see in a second, this is actually um, best um, re results which are achieved as a sub-form of mobile learning. Um, why is that? Because micro-learning can be basically on any device. It can be on screen as well on your laptop computer, um, but that just that doesn't really achieve where um, the, 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 its potential. Because um, why we like to have these small learning um, nuggets is because we want to be able to do them on our smartphone. And it's not only the smartphone that is available on the subway when you're uh, like bored and, and try to create one quest. It's also at, at home, it's everywhere. You're more likely to use your smartphones for tasks that you can do on your smartphone than to open up the laptop, to log in, to open up the website and so on. It's, it's um, much more convenient for you and will, you will do it much more often if you have it on your smartphone that also you have just with you all the time. And um, this is the bridge to mobile learning, um, which is even a stronger, um, has a stronger claim to say, okay, learn uh, wherever, whenever, and whatever you want. It has the same idea of micro learning to dissect the learning content into small learning units, but it gets um, a step further to have it available on the smartphone. And as I already mentioned before, you are probably, you, you have your smartphone with you almost all the time. Um, there are some, some surveys if you take even your smartphone to um, the bathroom or not. Um, but if, if you think about yourself when you have your smartphone with you 
um, and when not, you probably have it with you most of the time. And it's even more like that for students. Um, so for, for young people, um, ranging from the um, age of 10 um, up to um, their 20s or 30s, they're even more are used to having their smartphone all the time. And they're used to having um, to, to finding explanations online on their smartphone. So when they learn, when they want to um, figure out how to repair my sink, um, how to um, repair my bike, for example, or how to do this math problem, they will go on their smartphone and try to Google it, try to find an um, explainer video on YouTube, for example. So there is um, this natural um, yeah, thing of learning on the smartphone. We always, like adults, older people think perhaps, okay, yeah, no, if you're learning, that's something really serious. You have to sit down, open your textbook. This is not the way young people learn anymore. And um, th th this is what we really uh, want to stress and um, really, um, yeah, um, um, get the message across of how uh, important mobile learning is. It's not just a phrase. 80% of the YouTube videos are watched through your smartphone, for, ex uh, for example. So, um, yeah, everything you can do on a smartphone, you are more likely to do on a smartphone. That doesn't mean that smartphone is the solution for everything. Um, there are also tasks that you probably won't do on a smartphone. Um, you won't write long essays or a book chapter on a smartphone that's tedious, nobody likes that. So you really need to think, okay, what's the good things to do on the smartphones and everything that's easy enough to do on the smartphones uh, people will prefer, prefer to do on their smartphone. The next concept is blended learning. And blended learning combi combines teacher-led learning and IT-aided individual learning. So it's said to combine the best teaching methods. Um, on the one hand, you have the teacher in the classroom uh, or the teacher via MS Teams. Um, so, but there is a person you can interact with and um, eSquirrel was, was founded before there was um, distance learning, for example. So, of course, eSquirrel, you can use it for distance learning as well. Um, but the, the main idea from the beginning was that you have somebody um, teaching that you can ask, that can explain things, but you also have um, online learning where you can learn on your own, at your own pace, um, and get gamification, get um, insights into your learning that normal um, textbook or exercise books cannot achieve. And so this blended learning means mi mixing um, classroom learning with e-learning, um, to put it short. And um, what's next is gamification. So gamification is the game-based realization of serious content. Um, you can think about it as in games, you have incentives when you uh, win something, when you get points um, for doing something, um, but gamification is not a game. Um, a game, you just play for fun, and um, a game also has a beginning and an end, um, and it can be completely um, fictional. Gamification is always based somehow in the real world. Uh, you can use gamification for your um, kids to tidy up their room, for example. You give, can give them stars or acorns, as in our case, um, or check marks or, or things like that. So these things work. They um, don't only work in games, they also work in real life. And gamification is this concept of um, bringing this game-based methods, elements, into um, a serious context. And other basis, um, in addition to what I've said before, are efficient spaced repetitions. Uh, you see here the remembering curve according to Ebbinghaus. Um, that's not a, a new theory. You also see it on the graph. It's, it's pretty old from um, the journal where it was published. And um, you see the, um, the time and uh, on the horizontal axis, and the percentage of remembering something on the vertical axis. So imagine you learn something, um, then you remember it at 100% if I ask you one minute later. 
Um, if you really remember it, learn it, then you know it one minute later. But the more time passes, um, the more likely you are to forget um, what you just learned. And um, as the curve goes down, um, you see, okay, over time, the percentage of you remembering what you just learned goes down and down and down. But if you repeat at a certain point of time, this is where it says first re repetition, um, then of course, after repeating, you know it again, you know it for 100%, but then you also keep forgetting. But the effect is that you keep forgetting it more slowly. So this second dashed curve um, already um, goes down more slowly than the lower curve. And then if you even do a second repetition, um, you know it 100% again, and then um, even again, the, the curve um, decreases more slowly. So um, this is also um, a theory, a background that we also combi combined with eScroll um, to repeat when it's really uh, necessary um, in order to have this efficient spaced repetition. So to, to not repeat every day the same thing, that's really, really boring. And then you, you don't, you just learn it by heart and then you don't know anything about it or you, you just don't realize what you're actually doing. It doesn't make sense. It's just a waste of time. Um, but to repeat at the first, um, the first repetition after one day, then after three days, then after nine days. Um, so you, to, to have these longer repetitions, but to still have them so that you can remember what you learned. So um, this is the additional aspect. What's our vision of new learning and teaching? This, this is, um, I think, the most theoretical slide in my talk. Um, so what is our vision that we had six years ago and that we now realized um, already now for some years is that in real social learning situations. So this is so important to have a real social learning context, to not just have students learn by themselves on their smartphones. There is an app that says, hey, please repeat this. It's so easy to ignore a notification. Uh, you can just um, ignore it, swipe it away, you don't really care. So um, there needs to be real social learning situations. So you need to have your social context about your peers, your classmates, but also your teacher um, that, that can give you homework, for example, and, um, that, and your classmates to be in some kind of um, yeah, positive um, competition. So real social learning situations based on available textbooks. We don't just have exercises um, that um, are for um, any topic and then you teach with a textbook, um, you open it on a certain page, you want to give um, ex digital exercises, but they don't really fit to your textbooks. They're either too hard, um, too easy, you use vocabulary that you didn't learn in the textbook and so on. It just doesn't fit to your um, teaching. Uh, and so this is the second important thing to be based on available textbook. And what we do with all these concepts I've just told you, we motivate students via gamification through an app. We do this with efficient time-spaced repetition of small learning units, and um, we make it available that it's lightweight to practice anytime, anywhere. Second point is that we show teachers instantaneous feedback on students' progress via a web tool. The teacher knows what their students know or don't know even before they enter the classroom, and they can give them individual learning support. There's much more benefits to it, but um, these are the most important ones. And as a third point, we offer authors and publishers inside the box knowledge about the real life usage of exercises and the book. So um, you, you get information that you would not get normally just on a regular textbook, or on a regular film um, being screened somewhere. You don't know uh, how often it is viewed, um, which exercises students do most, for example. So um, this is where um, we give an additional value and give additional statistics on how these exercises are used, how well are they done, what is neglected, which exercises are repeated very often, and so on. To also give feedback back to the book or to the film what could you do better? What could be improved? What is important to students? What is not so important to students? Okay, and um, yeah, 
I, I will show you now how um, this works out in, in real life. Uh, eScroll interweaves your book content uh, with digital exercises. As, it's, as I said, it's not only necessarily book content, it can be also podcasts, it can be films, um, whatever, but you get digital exercises with them. And eScroll is a teaching and learning guide for the whole um, school year in the form of an entertaining quiz app that ensures long-term learning success. This is, if you want to nail it down to one sentence, this is what eScroll does. So eScroll is not just used once for um, students' motivation or students' engagement, like other apps um, that, that are really good, like Kahoot is, is very good for that, um, to have this in one lesson, um, this, this short-term engagement. Um, but you, if you really want to have long-term engagement over the whole school year, this is what you can perfectly use eScroll for. Um, yeah, here are two points why um, eScroll becomes a success, learning with eScroll becomes a success. Teachers like to use it because the automatic evaluation system saves them time, and students like to learn with eScroll because it's entertaining and um, they are keeping, they, they, are, they are being motivated through gamification. And the very important part is also the technical part that is available offline, that you can just really use it without needing any Wi-Fi. Uh, you just install the app once, you download the course, and then you can use it offline. Uh, which is once you are online again, the, um, your learning progress will synchronize, but you can do all the exercises without needing a Wi-Fi or any internet connection. Um, yeah, what can eScroll do for students? You have the ebook always with you. You can um, duel with classmates. You can raise your hand digitally, which means if you have an, a question to an exercise, you can just ask it. Um, you are motivated for long-term achievements, but you also have your self-paced self learning. You can decide yourself when you want to repeat a quest or when you want to learn something new. And as I said, very important, it's available offline. What can eScroll do for teachers? Um, of course, there's the learning analytics. So they see, get insights into what their students can do, can't do. Um, it's also on the individual student, there's a report, but it's also in general for the whole class. Uh, it automatically evaluates homework. You can answer the questions that raise their hand digitally. You can print out worksheets. So eScroll also bridges the gap back to um, the real life world to um, also hand out worksheets, for example. It's um, not necessary that you work in the classroom all the time with digital tools. Uh, it's also important that you work offline. And so this is also a very easy way just to print out worksheets um, with the questions that you could then uh, normally answer in the app. And of course, you can create quizzes. So um, you can um, yeah, make tests um, for, for your students that you then can um, or that is automatically evaluated and um, reported. So, as we've already um, heard before, eSquirrel is available on any device, on the smartphone, on the tablet, and on the web. So there is no excuse for not being able to use it. Um, any device will do. Also, all the devices, that was very important for us from the beginning. Um, yeah, how does teaching and learning with eScroll now actually work? If you're a teacher, you create um, a new class with your book. You just choose it from the list. Then you give your students a um, class code. They um, get the course immediately and can start to do the exercises even offline. The course always has the same structures in the textbook, so students find the way around easily. Um, you see that it's the same colors, the same um, contents, the, the same table of contents, and so on. So um, often people think, okay, I have done the book in an ebook, for example, and I click something, and then the eScroll app opens with the corresponding quest. Of course, this can be done, sure. Um, but most use cases, actually, it's like that, that students have the eScroll app, um, go through the app, do the exercises, and then go from the um, eScroll app into the ebook back. 
So both uh, ways are possible with eScroll to connect from the ebook to the eScroll app, but also to connect from the eScroll app to the ebook. It um, opens automatically on the correct page, and so students get um, additional information that they need in order to solve a question or to answer a question. And um, we, when, when designing eScroll with um, our team of teachers, we deliberately decided to not do some things that perhaps other apps do. There are some apps that if you answer something, then you get a little explanation why it's like that. Um, nobody reads these explanations. Um, you are just clicking to, to, to get the next question. And even if you want to read it, mostly it doesn't help you because it doesn't address the concern you really had. And this is why we say, OK, if you have a question, you can open the textbook, look there around for a solution, or you can raise your hand digitally and ask your teacher to help you. And it's much more efficient and much less frustrating than just to give you a plain text answer um, that doesn't really address your concerns. In eScroll, we have eight different types of questions. Um, if you count uh, multiple single choice, uh, ch multiple response question, even you, you could um, even come up to, to a bigger number um, because we have a lot of different and flexible question formats where we have closes, um, pairing questions, open questions, semi-open questions, and so on. So um, there is really um, a lot of different um, things going on. So it's not only just you get your multiple choice questions or you get always the same quiz questions, for example. So um, yeah, you, you really get a huge variety of um, question types that can be optimally answered on the smartphone. That's also a very important thing um, for us to, for mobile learning, to be able to do it on the smartphone in a comfortable way. Uh, and, and this means also that we have short questions, but a lot of them, um, and that, that we really see, okay, this is something that fits on a smartphone screen and works there very well. But that doesn't mean, of course, that it's just for easy things. You see Latin here, you will see math for school leaving um, exams later on. So it can really be used for very, very complicated, complicated things that are achieved to be presented in an easy way. That's always the, the hardest challenge to present something complicated as easy as possible. Um, here you see we include also videos that um, are explainer videos. So um, better than just having a text, it's better to have a video where somebody can explain things to you in a more detailed way with audio, with um, uh, um, yeah, texts and so on. So as YouTube videos are watched, for example, we can include those. Um, we also include audio um, for listening comprehensions, for example, and we also include algebra mathematical formally, as you see on this slide as well. There will be um, really more talks that go into detail of how to use explainer videos, how to use audio, how to use algebra, how to use it for math and so on. So I won't go into detail with that, just you know, this is all possible. Um, here you see how this gamification is brought into place. You see um, the different um, quests, you see the acorns you can collect, um, you see the leaderboard on the right hand side where we don't want to shame anybody. So you just see the top 33% of your class um, and you see your own position. But if you're outside of the top 33%, um, you're, you're not shown to the others. And yeah, this, this is really motivating to get into the leaderboard to see, okay, who collected now more acorns than me? Okay, I can redo, retake a quest to, to even get more points and more acorns. On um, the left screenshot, you see um, that in your first quest, you're in level bronze, for example. In the quest joining a class, you didn't start it yet. And um, in play through all your levels, you see, okay, that the acorn is filled, just um, not fully, just to, um, a, a fraction of 10 over 11, for example. Yeah, and then you can play through the levels. You can achieve silver level, gold level, epic level, and so on. That gives you then more points to score higher in the leaderboard. 
the teacher can see the progress of the entire class. We see we will see this more in the live demo afterwards. Um, teachers can give homework with one click. They just have a quest, click on give homework, say when the homework shall be finished, and um, it's done. The teacher can create um, a quiz or a test that um, then also is um, being corrected immediately. So um, there, there's a difference between tests and uh, normal quests. Um, a normal quest a student can do as often as he or she likes. And um, with a, a quiz, it's just answered one time and then you get the result. So it's just like a real test. And you can also print these tests um, to have optimized worksheets as well. Here you see how um, does the student progress looks on the app and on the teacher side, you get a report card of every, of every student where you can see, okay, what is their student's individual progress. Um, there are multi multiple educational scenarios how to use eScroll. So um, on the one hand, you can practice and you re repeat with it during class. So you can, for example, say now we're gonna go, we, we're gonna um, repeat this portion that we just introduced yesterday so, for example, please take out your smartphones. Um, you have now 20 minutes to repeat these quests. Um, it can also be done for teamwork. Often two students pair up and then they do it um, together again. And of course, with during this repeating and practicing, students can also raise their hand um, with uh, on the app and then the teacher can afterwards see, ah, okay, who had questions and then we'll answer those questions. EScroll can also be used for self-sufficient learning. So I just want to learn on my own. I don't even want to have a teacher. Um, I just get a course that's available online and I just learn and repeat for myself. Of course, that's also possible. Uh, EScroll can be used to practice or repeat at home for homework. Um, to, to give a quest at homework that should be done on the next week, for example. It can be used for replacement lessons. If you're not the primary teacher, then it's often quite hard to see, okay, where did the previous teacher stop? Uh, what should I explain to them? They can just very easily give um, eScroll quests as, um, yeah, um, as input for a lesson, for example, to really cover the whole replacement lesson with um, one or two eScroll quests. Um, you can use it for individualization of your course. You can lock or unlock your quests for your students. Um, so that you can really say, okay, this part you should already do, um, this part should not be done yet. You can use eScroll for class participation. So um, as I already mentioned, the student asks a question via the app that can be answered during the class. And the cool thing is um, the question can also be answered asynchronously. So the student, when sitting at home doing um, their homework and they have a question, normally, what do they do? They ask their parents, they don't know, they look it up somewhere. Um, and then they just hand in their homework, don't really know why something happened or not. Um, and then they don't get any information gain. With eSquirrel, in this situation, they can just um, click on the question mark, ask the teacher a question. The teacher can either reply uh, by, sending an email or just answer it when, when students are back in class again and, and answer the question. So students don't forget about having had um, a question to a certain exercise. eScroll can be used to track the learning progress of individual students, um, but also to get learning analytics for the entire class. It can be used for tests and quizzes, and it can also be a grading companion. Um, to see, okay, how much participation was there? Was the homework done in time? Um, and so on to, to take it. How were the tests, for example? Um, how good were they to get a um, suggestion for grading? Okay. Um, just to let you know before we go into the live demo in the next couple of minutes, um, what else do we of, as eScroll offer? We also create, um, offer to create courses based on your materials. We um, advertise um, the courses in our eScroll store and we publish them there. We can also create individual interfaces between your publishing tools, government uh, platforms, such as single sign-ons, authentications, um, interfaces with 
um, learning management systems, other ones that you might have, and so on. Um, and we can also provide you your own publishing app, it's just powered by eSquirrel, with your collectibles, so you don't collect an acorns, you collect your symbols, for example, that you need. Um, you have your customized colors and your own customized um, app appearance. Our partners here are just some of them, um, just, just to get a, a little snapshot of them. Um, yeah, you can look up more on our website online. I'm really proud um, to have them. Yeah, we got a lot of awards and distinction as well. We were um, elected top 100 startups in Austria 2019 and 2020. We won the um, Future Journey at Stake across London 2019. Um, we now won the Go Silicon Valley Award 2021 just two weeks ago, and we were finalists in the Startup World Cup Austria for a future of work and ad tech, for example. Um, so there's, we're really proud of what we've achieved already. Uh, we are recommended, therefore, by the Ministry of Education, um, by several newspapers, several magazines, and so on. So now, without further ado, um, I want to jump into the live demo so that you can um, try out eSquirrel and really see by yourself how this works. To do that, I will um, share my other screen. So. Okay. So, um, what you see now is on the left hand of the screen, you see the um, teacher's portal, and on the right hand of the screen, you see um, the eSquirrel app. And I would like you to um, join the um, course for, um, for the Digital Education Week. There is the code online but I will also share it with you right now. So I think um, some of you have already participated um, in, in this course. I will just um, give you here again the QR code. So if you have downloaded the eScroll app and um, registered, you can do this very easily with different options. Um, it just normally takes one, one click. Um, you can then go to here in the app, um, Klasse beitreten, or if you have it in English, um, join class, and then click on the QR code symbol and scan the code. Um, I will now just give you um, one or two minutes to do that so that you're able to join. There's even, as Theresa already in the introduction um, mentioned, there is um, the possibility of you, if you just complete one quest, one quest until the end of this webinar, you will um, get a 10% off of all your orders until the end of July or June, I think. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, you, you will see it in the, on, on the website, the um, exact conditions that apply. Um, but yeah, if you do this quest now with me, you already said you completed all the quests and you're eligible for this voucher. So just as an additional um, bonus for you. Okay. Um, I'd um, like to ask my colleagues to put this into the chat. Or I'll see if I can do this myself quite shortly. Um, yep. I, I also posted um, the, the, um, the, the registration code into, ah, and I see it as well, great, thank you, um, into the chat. So you um, can also go to join class and just type it in, type in the code there. Well, okay, so um, now we can start. I will show you first what a teacher sees. So here I'm in the teacher's portal and I am um, have created this class already. And when I go, oh, I will switch it to English. 
Um, if you go to manage, you will see um, this um, QR code again, and you will also see the instruction for students that you can print, that you can then hand out to them or email them that, so that they know what exactly need to, they, they need to do. They need to download the app, um, sign up, scan the code, and um, yeah, then that's all right. If they are the, under the age of 14 or 16, depending on in the, the country you're in, um, their parents or legal guardians need to consent to the declaration of privacy, uh, which you can also find here as just a short um, summary. You can also have the full um, privacy policy here, and then you get um, the possibility to sign those. You can also print it out with or without this declaration of consent. Um, so if the students are older than this age, of course, they can um, consent to this privacy policy themselves. Um, we also say very clearly what we share, what we don't share. There's, of course, no data sold to somebody else. Uh, we take a lot of care of really just giving um, the teachers the necessary information, what they need about the students. And what we give to, to publishers is aggregated um, and consolidated statistics about the usage and, of course, um, anonymized. So you just see, OK, 15 or 1,000 students did this quest and uh, on average they achieved this and this um, points, but you don't get any names and you don't get any individual learning results. Okay, um, going back to um, here, you can also, you see here that you can manage the class with more um, teachers. You can add different ones here. We already have some of them. And um, yeah, so you, you can um, teach with up to 15 teachers. Let's go to the left-hand side to the content and homework. Here you see the table of contents of your, um, of your course, and you can go into it and see, ah, okay, these um, are the questions. So you can inform yourself even before you go into the classroom um, as a teacher to what am I going to um, teach or what are the correct answers. It's also a cheat sheet for teachers so that they see, okay, what, what are the correct answers and what are not. Um, what you can also do here is you can give homework. So we example here, see there has already um, been a homework given for today, 10 o'clock, and we see that four of 12 students already completed this homework. If you click on it, um, you get here a um, summary of who already did the homework and who did not. You get the sent um, the, the hourglass with the check mark um, for those who've done it in time. You get um, these hourglasses with the exclamation point if they have not been done um, already. If those people who have not who have missed the deadline do it still, they will get. Um, this hour class that is in brackets to say, okay, you did it, but just not on time. Um, okay, so here we are already in the middle of the achievements. You see the achievements here of um, all your students. You can sort it by the score, for example. You can sort it by the number of completed homework. And um, yeah, so you here get an overview, but you can also click on the individual students, so that would be myself, to see this um, student's report. How many acorns did I collect? Okay, 15 out of 93, that's 16% of my learning progress. What's my score? Um, the, the score is calculated by uh, also getting the, um, getting the repetitions into account. So how often have they repeated and have they advanced through the different levels? Um, of course, everything is explained in detail here. Um, you see what's the homework performance, what's the quiz performance, for example, and so on. And for every um, single quest, you get the results you see, for example, here. I, um, for now, did this quest. I achieved 15 out of 15 acorns, 100 points, and I'm in level bronze, so they count one point, um, which means I got 15 
out of um, possible 60 points because when I repeat it four times, um, here my points will wait four times. Um, yeah, and I completed the homework in time. What you also see here, you don't see when the student exactly completed the homework um, because we want to um, make the students feel well. We don't want to like spy on them. We don't want to tell the teacher, OK, um, I know you, you were still up at 2 a.m. in the morning and did the homework or you did it five minutes before the class. It doesn't matter um, if they did it before the deadline, they did it in time. If not, they didn't do it in time. Um, so this is here important for the homework. Um, OK, I would now like to um, make a quest together with you. So if you go into the course on Digital Education Week, I would like to do um, behind the curtains um, with me. Um, so if I gave this now as homework, I could say, OK, behind the curtains. Um, it should be done where we're doing it now. And um, let's give us time until one so that you can also do it after the lecture. Um, you get the deadline. Of course, you can also do it after the deadline, um, but then you will, your, um, your sour class will be in brackets. And as you see already here on the screen, you um, get a notification. Oh, I got a new homework. You also see um, the quest swiveling that you see, ah, yeah, this means there is only um, not so much time anymore to do this. So let's get right into it. Uh, we have one hour, 17 minutes left. So let's start it. Um, and as you see here, this will now um, put uh, or give you some eight, I think, questions about what I just been talking to, um, before, what um, the different concepts are that are behind eScroll. So, um, as you've seen, eScroll makes learning playable. How do you call making non-game content playable? That's called gamification. Um, on the bottom right, you see you can run two acorns with that. And yeah, luckily I got the two acorns. Um, so next question. It's very important to eScroll that you can always learn wherever and whenever you want. A classroom, your desk, or your PC become less important. How do you call this concept? concept? Um, yeah, if you paid attention, this is exactly what mobile learning is. Um, third question. At the same time, eScroll makes it possible to combine classical teaching with digital enhancements. How do you call this combination of face-to-face -face teaching and digital aided learning phases? That's called blended learning and two acorns as well. Uh, if you're faster than me, you, you can just play it to the end. But this also shows you you can do this in the classroom. Um, if there, you don't have any smartphone sharing possibility in the classroom, you can also do it in the web and then you to put it on a projector, for example, um, to do it with the students, to do it at the same time, to engage with them, um, but also to give it as homework, for example, as I already said. So next question is, um, as you have learned in the first quest, eScroll trains your long-term memory through several repetitions that take place in always larger intervals. How do you call these concepts? Here you see another form of question format. And I will now answer something wrong to also to show you how this works. So how do you call this concept? Let's call them international competition. Um, and that's wrong. So if you answer it wrong the first time, you just um, get to know that it's wrong. And then you have the chance to come back to it later. Here you see another question type. It's just yes or no, true or false questions. When you use spaced repetitions in an optimal way, you repeat learning content exactly then when you were forgetting it. That's correct. Just get one acorn for that. Um, had a 50-50 chance. Where do we develop eSquirrel? We developed that in, um, let's say, in London, for example. Um, that's not true. So we go to the next question. Um, if you have ideas how to make eSquirrel even better, you can write us, just send us not a racing pigeon, but an email to the following address. Uh, it's not holy moly, it's feedback at eScroll.com. Um, and now the last question in this quest. You can say enjoy practicing in many languages, match a pair. You see here even another question format. Um, viel Spaß beim Üben, that's German. Amusez-vous, entraînez-vous, it's French. Um, 
The other one, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce, but I know that this is Hungarian and Scarlet Cvichenje, that's Slovak. Uh, and this was not so easy, so I got three acorns for that if I answered it correctly. And I got it, great. So I see to the um, left on my, my screen, I see that I've now collected 12 acorns. So I've run through a quest now. I will go back now to the first question that I answered incorrectly and get a second chance. So I know that um, international competition was not correct. Um, so let's try with international repetitions, for example. Um, on the lower right corner, you see you just get one out of two acorns because it's already your second shot at the question. Um, and yeah, it's not correct. Repetitions was correct. International was not correct. So now I get shown the solution. I get, okay, it's spaced repetition. So now I've at least seen how, how um, it's possible to solve it. And so I got to the next question I did not answer correctly. Um, yeah, we don't develop eSquirrel in London, but we do develop it in Vienna. So also here, I just can get one acorn and um, I got it. I had have now my 13 acorns. Now coming back to the question I still didn't answer correctly. Um, you see here, I don't get any acorns anymore because I already saw the solution, but I still need to answer it at uh, one time so that I can finish this quest. So um, it's spaced repetitions and I can now finish this quest. I uh, was able to crack 13 out of 16 acorns. I did it the first time, so I'm in level bronze. Um, acorns in level bronze are worth one point, so I got 13 points and I did the homework uh, on time. So I can go back to the course and be very happy. Here um, it, it fills up gray that tells me, okay, uh, when this goes down slowly, 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 you see, okay, when I can repeat it again. If I just click on it right now, it tells me, okay, um, the right quest comes to the right time. This one um, in about a day, you can um, practice, you can still practice. You see the um, squirrel on the right with the acorn in its um, hand, or you see the, the, the squirrel laying on the branch um, to be um, rather lazy and, and don't um, practice again. So we will decide to, to be rather lazy um, because we wouldn't get, um, we, we couldn't advance a level anyway. This is how these spaced repetitions come in place here. Um, yeah, now I'm interested in the leaderboard to see um, if something changed. You see here, my position is um, place five to 12 people in this leaderboard. Um, so I'm, I'm not shown to the others. Um, and I got 28 points. So Daniela, both Daniela's have 34.5 points. So with my 28 points, it's it's actually not so hard to um, to overtake them. So perhaps I would just do one more quest or repeat another one to to get more points to be more on the top of this leaderboard. Um, so what what does this mean now for the teacher? Um, you can. See here um, how many of you now followed with me. Um, so there were some that also um, did this quest um, with me now. And of course, if you have a question to um, a certain um, question, like here, I will just show you here. You can click on the question mark and um, type a question um, to the teacher. And um, here you will see that in the teacher's portal that you got a help request. You see the student and um, you see the question they had. And if you have answered the question, if you answered with an email or just marked as done, um, then the help request disappears. A last thing I would like to um, show to you is how to create quizzes. So um, you can just make a um, digital education week quiz, for example. You say, okay, it takes um, 60 minutes. Um, you choose any questions you like from any chapters. Um, you can go back and forth and um, say, okay, I want to have, um, for example, 
this question to it. So now I have two, two questions. I can schedule it to say, okay, it should start like right now. Um, or you can also choose to print it. And then you see you get this optimized um, printout um, worksheet. You have also the pictures to it. You can resize them, make them smaller, bigger, also um, get rid of them if you don't need them. And uh, yeah, to, to print it out just with one click. Um, if we now scheduled the quiz, um, in the quiz we can go um, to the um, quiz section here, and here you see the quiz and you can take it. But I'm sure for details there will be other talks that go into much more detail of that. Um, what I would like to show you when in the remaining um, three to four minutes before we got into the Q&A, is to just to, to, to tell you some more numbers about eSquirrel and to, to um, yeah really make you understand how and why this works. I will change what I'm just sharing. So, so that's our growth, our KPIs. We um, tend to be very transparent with that. Um, as I already said at the beginning, um, at, uh, at the beginning of the Digital Education Week, there are 22 million answered questions with eSquirrel, 90 authors. At the beginning of the pandemic, we had 50 new, 5,000 new users every day. Um, we got in the first three days of the pandemic, we got so many new users as in the first three months of the previous school year that started um, in fall 2019. So in three days, we got as much as in three months. There wasn't even some time to, to do some communication about it, to do some advertising about it. This showed the potential actually of people who already knew about eScroll, who just thought, okay, digital teaching perhaps sometimes in the future. And then there was the day um, when they started to use it. We have 80,000 registered teachers and users, 350,000 created exercises, 200 books from more than 18 publishers um, and um, 2,500 schools where 2,000 of them are in the German speaking countries and around 100,000 app downloads. So to, to give you um, an insight here, that would be a deep dive. If anybody's interested, you're very welcome to um, book, um, to, 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 to schedule um, an appointment. Um, or a talk with me to, to go into this in detail. You see here how actually how much if um, students start to use eScroll um, that it really works and um, how much they then actually collect acorns, how much they're, they're learning progress it and so on. So if um, also you as a publisher um, and together with us advertise it, let it know to, to, to teachers that this exists, that it works, um, you will see very, very good results in um, how much students learn with eScroll and um, yeah, how much they really uh, use it. This is what um, here you, you see in, in some slides. Additionally to that, we have top ratings in the app stores. Um, and this is very remarkable, I think, because this is an app that students are, I would say, forced sometimes to use by their teachers. You cannot freely say, okay, I don't want to use, use this for school. They do have to do this for school and they still like it. There are so many other um, things that needs to be, uh, that, that, that are used for school that students have to use for the schools. They have a rating of 2.0, 3.4 perhaps, um, even apps like MS Teams or so, for example, because students are just frustrated and they have to do their homework. That's not the case with eScroll. The students, even though they have to learn with our app, they also say, okay, it, it's so beneficial for me. I, I like it so much and I love to use it. Um, so my takeaways before I go into the Q&A, um, eScroll is your complete teacher solution ready to use right now. You don't need to, to wait for anything, wait for any initiatives. It's also very um, cheap to use, very affordable. Um, you can onboard a lot of um, books quite easily, um, quite fast, and at a very affordable price. It's available offline and GDPR compliant. 
And to give you a bonus, there is a minus 10% welcome discount for eScroll.publish um, for new customers. And then there is this additional 10% off um, for the if, if you complete this quest in our course. And um, yeah, you can also increase your sales figures, your revenue when teachers love your books even more. Um, teachers tend to um, order books that are available with eScroll um, rather than books that are not available with eScroll. So um, yeah, this is really also um, a very good possibility to increase the sales of your books. With that, I'll really invite you to digitally enhance your books together with us and I'm open for any questions.